Amen. Amen. That was good. That was good. You know, we, we talked last week. Um, it was the first of the year. We talked about how the Lord showed that uh, we need to look at uh, the life of King David and take some lessons from that life as we move through this new year. You know, every day there are challenges that we're going to face. And this year will be no different as we walk day by day. But the Lord equips us and he prepares us for each and every challenge that we come up against. And you always have to remember that. You know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, right? And so we just walk that out through the power he gives us by the Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen? Amen. So, Father, I do thank you for this day. I thank you for those you brought here. I ask you to open up our hearts and minds to you. Father, that we would follow you in the way that you've called us, Father, being sensitive to your Spirit's leading and with an obedient heart. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So remember last time we started with King David and uh, the prophet anoints him king, right? So now we take up with the rest of the story here. And you know, so, so what happens now? King David is anointed king, right? Out of all the brothers, he's chosen. He's king. And so they take him up, and, and they, they make a big parade, and they take him to the palace, and he lives happily ever after, right? No, that's not, that's not what happens at all, right? Well, let me, let's read what happens, okay? 1 Samuel, chapter 16. I'm going to read verses 14 through 23 first, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Classic. So the first thing we see now, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Now, as I've looked through the scriptures, David is the only person that I can see in the Old Testament where it said the Spirit of God rested on him and never left. Okay? That's the first thing we've got to remember. Because the Spirit departed from Saul, who is the present king at this time, right? And then look what it says. And an evil spirit. Lord, tormented and troubled him. When you don't have the protective covering of the Lord, you open yourself up for all types of things. Just so you know, that's something that we can learn from that. And look, then look what it says. Saul's servants said to him, Behold, an evil spirit from God torments you. Well, they, they recognize that too. Let our Lord now command your servants here before you to find a man who plays skillfully on the lyre which is like a guitar with no handle. I looked it up. What's it? It don't, it don't, have, it don't have a neck. That's a handle. It's got a handle on it. It's, it's a handle on it. <laughs> and when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it and you will be well. Saul told his servants, find me a man who plays well and bring him here. You know, when you're in trouble... Uh, people always have suggestions. Not that that was a bad suggestion, but here's the thing. If I see someone being tormented in a spiritual way, why didn't they call Samuel? Really? Why didn't they call Samuel and say, hey, Samuel, there's a problem here, a spiritual issue. Well, you know why they didn't call Samuel? Because he didn't want to hear what Samuel had to say, just so you know. That's something we can always learn. People are always willing to give advice in your troubles, but choose your counsel wisely. Something we can learn. <clears throat> so one of the young men said, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who plays skillfully, a valiant man, a man of war, prudent in speech. That means he thought before he talked. An eloquent, an attractive person, and the Lord is with him. So people recognize that King David, I'm going to call him King David because he is, he, he was a valiant man, but, but they recognized that the Lord was with him. See, the thing is, as you walk out this life, people are going to recognize the Lord's with you. They will. They'll recognize not only is he with you, he's in you. Amen? All right. All right. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me David, your son, who is with the sheep. They knew he was a sheep herder. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread and a skin of wine 
and a kid and sent them by David, his son, to Saul. And David came to Saul and he served him. Saul became very fond of him and he became his armor bearer. It's kind of like your war valet. He carried your stuff, had it with you, and fought for you too. Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David remain in my service for he pleases me. And when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, David would take his lyre and he played it. So Saul was refreshed and became well and the evil spirit left him. Being around people of God, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And music and worship is a powerful spiritual weapon, people. Amen? That's why I'm always so thankful we have our people here. We get to praise them together. All right, so now we go to chapter 17. So turn the page. 1 Samuel 17. I'm going to read to you all a little bit, but we're taking lessons, right? Okay. 1 Samuel 17, verse 1. I'm reading out the New Living Translation now. Philistines mustered their army for battle and camped between Sokah in Judah and Azekah Ephesidim. Mim, mim, mim. Hey, close enough. <laughs> I didn't look at the map. Saul encountered, or Saul countered by gathering his Israelite troops near the valley of Elah. So the Philistines and the Israelites faced each other on opposite hills with the valley in between them. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. Now here it says he was over nine feet tall. In some studies he was between 10 and 12 feet in height. Now I'm about six foot, a little over. Okay? This is a big boy, right? He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. That's impressive. He also wore a bronze leg armor and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was heavy and thick as a weaver's beam. Yeah, that'd be big. Tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Okay, this would be intimidating, right? Okay. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called, I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. What can we learn here? The enemy always shows up scary looking. Your situation, your problems are scary looking. They appear giant-like, right? I mean, every doctor's report, yuck, right? You know, every bank statement, yuck, right? Your problems always appear like giants. And you know what else? They're loud. They're loud. They taunt in your mind, right? Why? They want attention, right? Your problems want attention. The enemy wants to use situations and circumstances in your life to draw attention. Right. What does Goliath say? Verse 9. If he kills me, then we'll be your slaves. But if I kill him, you'll be ours. The enemy always wants you to fight under his terms, too, by the way. <laughs> I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. Now, when Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Yep, their eyes were on the problem. And they were terrified and deeply shaken. Fear, you know, you know how you hear me always say, pain is a great motivator. And it is. Pain will motivate you to change your situation, your circumstance. You know what else motivates people? Fear. It never motivates them in the right way. But it moves people. Animals are scared. You ever been with a scared animal? Oh, 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 you're in trouble because they're, they're going to do crazy things. Hmm. Verse 12. Now, David was the son of a man named Jesse. It's almost like we never heard about him. An Ephrathite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Now, Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab and Shemiah 
had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. Now David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army. But David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. Listen, the, you know, the biblical accounts aren't always chronological. But we don't necessarily know the chronology of these events. We, we don't. I looked it up. But I'm going to say, at this time, David has been anointed king already. He already has. We know that. And I believe he's already served Saul by playing the half guitar. I didn't know what a lyre was. <laughs> it's kind of a half thing. But the point is, what happened to David after he was anointed king in front of all the in front of Jesse, Samuel said he's king. He got sent back to the sheep. Now, what do you think David was thinking? Have you ever been called to something you know God called you to it? He did. You, you, you had that experience, that moment where God spoke to you something you knew it was true. Wake up the next day ready to take it. We're going to have this promise today. Day ended up, and tomorrow ended up like the day today and yesterday before, and here we are. And you know the promise God spoke to you, and yet your situation hadn't changed yet. There's a lesson we can learn here, people. All right. Verse 16. For 40 days, every morning and every evening, the Philistine champions strutted, I think that's funny, strutted in front of the Israelite army. Now, you have to understand, in the Bible, 40 signifies new life, new growth, and transformation. There's a reason that the, God's people were in the desert 40 years. Verse 17. One day, Jesse said to David, Take this basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along. And bring back a report on how they're doing. Verse 19. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. They weren't really fighting. They were just kind of against each other. So David left the sheep with another shepherd. And he set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. They were just talking, guys. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, and he hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. The same brothers that were sitting there as he got anointed king, by the way. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. Have you seen him? Have you seen this monstrous problem I got? He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. Hey, <laughs> David heard that. David asked the soldier standing nearby, now what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? So what's the reward here? Look what he says. Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David doesn't say the armies of Saul. He doesn't say, my army. He was the king in his heart. He didn't say, this is my army this giant's defying. He didn't say that. He said, this is God's army. Interesting, huh? So you always have to remember these things about David. He was a man after God's own heart. We already know that, right? We discussed that last week. The Spirit of God was on him and didn't leave him. And at this point, he's already been anointed king. 
these things. He recognizes this as he steps into the situation. See, you got to know who you are to step into every situation. you got to know who God has called you to be, right? It says in Romans that the giftings and callings of God are irrevocable. I've had some people say, well, you know, I was gifted in this way, but that was so many years ago. No, not, not in God's way of thinking. The giftings and callings you have, you had when he gave them to you, and you'll have them forever. Irrevocable means they don't go away. Amen? Oh, all right. All right. Verse 27. And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that is the reward for killing him. Verse 28. But when David's oldest brother, anybody got an older brother? Let's not talk about it. Eliab heard David talking to the men. He was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He demanded. What about those few sheep? Those few sheep. What about those measly little sheep that you watch over? That you're supposed to be taken care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just won the battle. You just came to look. What have I done now, David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over to some of the others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Was David deterred from someone close to him, discouraged him? No. That would kind of stink. Your older brother putting you down for asking a simple question. Jealousy there? Probably. <laughs> Don't let people close to you, even people close to you, get in the way of what God's called you to do. Okay? Listen, you love them, you pay attention, you know, you know, you, you have a good heart, but you listen to what God says. Amen? It's a lesson we can learn right there. All right. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Verse 32. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. <laughs> Verse 33. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. See, Saul was stating the facts of the situation. See, we, we know that at this time, David had to be... He had to be between 12 and probably 18. He's a kid, guys. And this king is looking at this 10-footer and then looking at this little boy. He said, what are you talking about? And yet David spoke boldly. David knew who he was. See, think about what, what's David thinking? Am I king yet? No. God said I was going to be. This guy can't kill me. There's no way. I was called to be king. See, God has a promise for you. You will receive that promise through believing what God said and patience, making sure you don't stop believing for however long it takes. And that's the lesson you need to learn. We all need to walk in that lesson. Amen? All right. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. And when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club. And I rescue the lion from, or the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. Guys, over there, when they say lion... They're not talking about the bobcats that I have up on the hill. Not even the, a mountain lion. A lion? He's talking about a real lion. We understand bears. I don't want to grab a bear by his mouth either. But David did. Because he was bold. But why was he bold? He was bold because the Lord had anointed and called him. He did what needed to be done. Because the Lord was with him. Amen. 
And here's something to remember. We, we keep talking about the Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. Is the Lord with you? Always, right? We talk about the ABCs of salvation. A, admitting and acknowledging I need a Savior. I have sinned. I need a Savior. B, believing Jesus is my Savior. And C, confessing that with my mouth. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, he rose from the dead, I will be saved. The Spirit of the Lord, that moment, the Holy Spirit comes inside of my spirit and seals me under the day of redemption. There is your evangelism call right there. There's the truth. If you don't know what I'm talking about, come talk to me. See, I'm not here to, to get you into heaven. The Holy Spirit calls people. He's the only one that will get you there by you believing that Jesus died for your sins, right? When he tells me, I'll tell you all about it. If you don't know what I'm saying, please talk to anybody in here. Look to your left, look to your right. They can share the truth of the gospel with you, I promise you. What I'm here to do is train you and equip you to do what? To do the work of the ministry. To share Jesus with whoever anybody has to share encouragement to, to share lessons that you learn as you walk with the Lord and as the Holy Spirit leads you that's what I'm here to do amen, amen. amen. That, that was a pause for a cause all right I'm pretty close all right <laughs> I've done this with both lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too for he has defied the armies of the living God again it's not the armies of Saul it's the armies of the living God. Verse 37, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear, he knew who delivered him, will rescue me from this Philistine. See, he didn't rely on himself or even on his own experiences. He recognizes from his experience that God was with him and that that's who he had to rely on. Hmm. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. <laughs> Good luck. But I better do something with this boy. So, Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. Hey, in the natural, that made sense. You better get some tools, boy. You're going to go in a fight. David put it on. He strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. When you're called to do something, there's people that may try to help you. And they may mean well, right? But again, God is the only one that can tell you what you need for whatever situation, okay? Something we can learn from that. I've had people tell me how I need to pastor a church, and I listen. See, David tried it on. I listen. I say, okay, Lord, what do you think about this? What do you think? We better start church at 11. That's a better time, you know. All the books say that's when you should start. Lord, what time do you want to start church? Please don't say 7 or 8 in the morning. That's too early. <laughs> I make my request known to God. <laughs> See, the thing is, is and, and people may have the right heart trying to help you. Please don't misunderstand me. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't fit, it's not for you. And God will tell you what fits, and he'll give you peace in it. He's the only one that can give you that peace. David put that on. He didn't have any peace. He said, I, I, this isn't me. I can't do this. And so he took it off, even though the king had given it to him. Verse 40. So he picked up five smooth stones from a stream, and, they, and he put them into his shepherd's bag. See, David started a shepherd, and he never stopped being a shepherd. He was a man after God's own heart. Who's the good shepherd? Yeah, amen. Then he armed only with his shepherd's staff and a sling. He started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Man. Verse 41. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him. Sneering in contempt at, his ruddy at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. That you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. When you go out into battle with the enemy, he's going to get louder. When you're doing the things God's told you to do, the enemy is going to ramp up anything he can to scare you. 
Does he have any power? Jim already read the scriptures. The only power the enemy has is the power we give to him. We relinquish. There's power that the enemy has. Please hear my words closely. To say that the enemy doesn't have power would be a lie. The enemy has power, but no authority. Understand that. The enemy has power, but no authority. Who has the authority? We do. We do. When we exercise that authority, the enemy becomes powerless. Amen? But, it's only, but remember, we can only operate in authority when we're under his authority. All right. Another pause for a cause. Okay. Where am I at now? And every, okay, okay, there we go. Yep. Verse 45. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin. You come to me in these natural things, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. The God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. He knew where his power and strength came from. Verse 46, today the Lord will conquer you, and I'll kill you and cut off your head. And then I'll give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. Amen. Praise God. Verse 47, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. That was bold, guys. That was bold. You think David had faith? Faith means he believed God. He didn't believe in God. He believed God. God told him, and he says, okay, that's true. So be it. I'm going to walk it out. (laughs) I love this part, verse 48. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to him. There wasn't any fear here. Hmm. Verse 49. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and he hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and glass stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. <laughs> then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that the champion was dead, they turned and ran. Submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. Mm. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph, and they rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and the wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Sharaim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and they plundered the deserted Philistine camp. David took the Philistines to Jerusalem, but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. As Saul watched David go out to fight the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of his army, Abner, whose son is this young man? I really don't know, Abner declared. We'll find out who he is. Again, maybe Maybe the chronology is a little messed up. But I don't think Saul was ever in his right mind after the Lord left him. I think he was just seeking relief from things. You know, I believe David had served in his household. It said Saul was fond of him. But even then, David was kind of forgotten. Guys, just because you're forgotten by men, God never forgets you. And he does not ever forget the call he put on your life. You see, David could have come and said, listen, Saul, remember me? Don't you remember me? Don't you know who I am? I helped you do this. No. He didn't worry about what was happening in the natural. He just followed what the Lord told him. So many times we get hung up in the natural with people. Man, why did he treat me that way? And it gets us off our purpose. Does that make sense? You know, you go to do something and somebody can kind of mess you up by saying something crazy. I, I've been there. I, I knew I was on a mission to do something and say somebody say Slows me down. 
enemy will always put those types of things in your way. That's a lesson. That, guys, I'm reading this learning. I'm saying, Lord, show me from your historical account of what happened. Because if David's a man after your own heart, I want to know about King David. I want to know about him. I want to know what, how can I be to walk out a life where I can be a man after your own heart too. I know your spirit's inside of me. You see, when I think about stuff like that, I, you know, it said, you know, Moses, I speak face to face, right? That's what the word says. Moses, God said, you know, I, I speak through the prophets, but Moses, I speak face to face because he's my friend. When, when, when I think about Moses, I think, man, face to face. I was thinking about that this morning in the shower. Lord, you spoke to Moses face to face. And you know what he told me? He says, Monty, would you rather be face to face or heart to heart? I'd rather be heart to heart with you, God. If face to face, I'll probably die. <laughs> but heart to heart, you'll take care of me. You see, David was a man after his own heart. Called to do a purpose. Called to do something that God only wanted him to do. And you say, well, that was David. But what about me? <laughs> he has a thing only you can do. Each and every one of you, only you. God made you on purpose for a purpose. And he gave you his spirit to guide you for every step in that purpose. And he gave us his word so we can take lessons from his word to apply to accomplish the thing he wants accomplished for his purposes. All he wanted was somebody willing to do it for him. As soon as David returned from killing Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul, and the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David replied, name is Jesse, and we live in Bethlehem. See, David had to be a humble young man there. Man. Because, you know, again, in the natural if, if I know I'm going to be king and I just proved it, you see the head? God, is this not the time that I walk into this? Really? Ah, here I am. No. He did what God told him to do. We're going to keep going, guys. We're going to keep going, David, because there's so many lessons. And if anybody knows anything about King David, he made some mistakes, too. We're going to talk about those, too. And even through his mistakes, he still was a man after God's own heart. A lot of lessons we're going to learn, guys. Come on up. I'm... I know that there are things that God has called us to do. Do you all realize Today's the 8th. Basically two weeks from now, we will have been in this building one year. One year. Yeah. And that's because of God. I mean, that's because of God. And a building, listen, the church isn't a building. But it's a tool. And I praise God for good tools. Amen? Because y'all remember the tool we had before? That's really cool, Kathleen. I'm not, that's cool. It's cool. I never want to say anything. It's cool. Because it's a good tool now, too. Praise God. Folks, we couldn't have squeezed y'all in with a shovel. We couldn't have. But God had a plan and a timing. We are scratching the surface on that plan. But I'm telling you, his timing is now. You know, through different people's giftings and callings, I'm talking about Brenda and Kitty here, the Lord has provided some funds for the Hungry Hearts Ministry. That's right. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Kitty. <laughs> walking in their calling, walking in their gifting. When, but, but here's the thing. This is what I recognize. When God supplies something, that means he has a plan. Does that make sense? He's doing something. And, and because it's not like Pastor Monty has all these good plans here. Guys, when they want me to plan, like I'm good for about 20 minutes. And then and I start 
fidgeting. We need to start moving people, and they're still with their calendar. And I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> but we need people like that. But the thing is, as you serve in your calling, my job is to just recognize, God, you're up to something. You're up to something good. You've brought all these people in here. Every person with the Spirit of God living inside of you, every person with a gifting and a calling, every person assigned to this region for a purpose beyond what we can understand. God, you're up to something. And I don't care what enemy armies are out there making noise. Spirit of poverty, spirit of depression, spirit of addiction, spirit of... A lot of different spirits that have been territorial here, okay? And they make noise. Spirit of destruction and suicide, by the way. They make noise. They make noise. A lot of noise. Trying to get your attention. And yet, we have a loving God residing inside of us. Speaking to us heart to heart. Encouraging us in those giftings. In those callings. He did not forget you. He did not forget you. You've been on his mind since the creation of the world. How can that be? <laughs> He's an infinite God with a plan, speaking to your heart. Don't get distracted by those loud Philistine nobodies. Let's, let's say our confessions. Yeah, that's where we're at. You ready? Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has supplied all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, for my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I do will prosper from like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. With what measure I meet, it is measured unto me. I sow bountifully, therefore I reap bountifully. I give cheerfully, and my God has made all grace abound toward me. And I, having all sufficiency, do abound. Oh, do abound to all good works. Oh, I got off track. <laughs> Follow me. Neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. And in my pathway there is life and there is no death. I am a doer of the word of God, and I am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in those things which I do, because I am a doer of the word of God. The word of God is forever settled in heaven, therefore I establish his word upon this earth. Amen. That one was going around in my mind a lot this week, and it was comforting and encouraging. Mm -hmm. I love David's attitude towards evil, because he did know who he belonged to. Amen. And he knew what that meant, and then he acted on it. Mm -hmm. That is a lesson. I am going to speak your blessings over you today. I encourage you to close your eyes and soak them in. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders. And blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. May the Lord's unfailing love rest upon you, even as you put your hope in him. May the grace of the Lord pour out on you abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The Lord knows the plans he has for you, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. May you embrace this truth. When you call upon the Lord and pray to him, he will listen to you. You will seek the Lord and find him when you search for him with all your heart. May you be strengthened with all power according to God's glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. May you be blessed with the love and kindness of the Lord. May you have abundant happiness because your strength is in the Lord and in your heart are pilgrim highways to his holy mountain. May you go from strength to strength and appear before God in Zion. Behold, God is your salvation. May you trust in him and not be afraid. 
For the Lord God is your strength and song, and he has become your salvation. May calmness and confidence in the Lord make you strong. May you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. May you set the Lord continually before you. Because he is at your right hand, you will not be shaken. Therefore, may your heart be glad and may your glory rejoice and your flesh also will dwell securely. May the Lord yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. May grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. This Tuesday night will be our first Bible study coming back. Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, we'll be back. Okay. The first two we're going to do, we're going to finish up Kingdom Principles. Okay. And it's going to be on uh, Kingdom Giving. And understand something. That's something that will set you free. There's some biblical principles that I promise will set you free in finance as you apply his principles. Amen? So that will be the next two. Now we're going to go right in, okay, to the next Bible study I'm going to be teaching. And I don't even know exactly what to call it, but we're going to do a Bible study. It's going to be a six-week study on marriage and relationships. So... Listen, if you say to yourself, well, I'm not married, so I don't need to go. No, you need to come. Well, you know, whatever. No, you need to come. Really. This is going to be a good one. Because there's principles in, in, in God's word that obviously help us in this relationship. But it helps us in all relationships. Amen? And so, so be looking forward to that. Uh, again, so we're just going to jump right into those. So you'll pro we're probably going to have, well, we will have eight, and then we have our next worship night scheduled, and that one's going to be important. We've got some strategic things I know the Lord wants us to do for this region. So be praying and looking forward to that, okay? Again, God has got a lot of things planned, okay? And it's to advance his kingdom, the way he thinks about things, the way he thinks wants done in this region, to affect a physical change in this region, but a spiritual change in people's hearts. Amen? But it has to start in the spiritual. Amen? Okay. And so that's, I think, the major announcements. We didn't know we're getting back into Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. Okay. And, and, okay, I know, I know it's tough. We had a bunch of little kids. It's tough to, to get out with a bunch of little kids. We have child care now. Okay. We're going to have child care for the kids. Okay. So for that hour, that 6 to 7, we've got times. And we've got some people I want to talk to as well on that. But guys, it's, it's, it's going to be good. Ready, okay? Uh, if you have prayer, Richard and Julie are going to be down here. Please come to them for prayer. Jim's here. Guys, look, you can pray with anybody. There's people that will pray, right? So when I mention people's names, that's because I know there's some calling there. But listen, if you think, man, I need to, I need to, I need to pray with, with Chewy. Then pray with Chewy. Praise God. Pray with Max. Pray with Sean. Maddie's like, but if you feel led, no. <laughs> well, I, actually, yeah. but uh, I'm gonna get some prayer. But if you need prayer, please come up and get some prayer. Uh, be excited. Be ready for the next steps He has for you. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every person you've called here on purpose for your purposes, Father. I thank you for the hearts that are turned towards you. Father, I, I speak that we are all people after your own heart. Because you reside inside of us, we are people after your own heart. Father, your will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, in this region as it is in heaven. Father, I speak to everybody that isn't functioning the way that body needs to function. Father God in heaven, I speak that every cell, organ, and tissue functions the way you created it to function, Father, over each and every person in this room, Father, that they would walk in health and healing, that they would prosper in that health because their soul is prospering, their mind, will, and emotion is prospering in you and in your word, Father, so they will be in health. I speak health over this room in Jesus' name, each and every person here or that's listening on the radio or that's listening on Facebook or internet or all that mess. Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for these people. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this region, and I thank you for calling us to be a part of it, whatever part we are, Father. 
Help us to walk in that courage that you give us. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Father, we walk